Hello and welcome. It is early April. Spring has sprung, which means for us indoor gardeners and outdoor gardeners, it is time to start feeding the plants. So I'm going to tell you my routine. I don't know if it's really a routine. It's a rough routine on how I nourish my indoor plants. So I'll start with schedule and a little, little bit about the um, about where I, I live um, because that will help you determine uh, how often you want to feed your plants. I live in the Arizona desert. We have a very long growing season here. I started fertilizing my um, house plants uh, the end of February, the third week of February, because we get warm. We start to warm up, we get sunny, so that's when our spring starts. We also have a very long fall. It is warm up until like, very warm up until like beginning of November, end of November. So I feed my house plants every month during that stretch of time. So for you in a shorter growing season, two times might be enough for them. That said, I don't feed them in the winter months. They don't need it. That's their time for rest. So I know some people do it diluted, but I don't. I just leave my plants be in terms of pruning. If, if there's something I have to prune, but I try to do my pruning, have that all wrapped up by fall, just leave them be. And then when February comes, I'm like, oh, hello, mama's back. So I feed my plants at full strength, uh, my tropical and subtropical plants at full strength according to package directions or bottle directions. I know a lot of people do half. I do half for my cacti and my succulents. And yes, I do feed them indoors also because indoors is not the environment that these plants would probably prefer to prefer to grow in, <laughs> being a lot of them are native to the great outdoors. So I uh, do those at half strength. My tropical plants, I do at full strength. You can use your judgment and see if, if you want to do them at half strength. For instance, if it calls for a teaspoon per gallon, you might want to do a half a teaspoon per gallon. You can see how your plants are doing and your what your weather is and how they're growing and all of that. So I'll start with worm compost. And I don't use this for all of my plants now because I have so many, but I do use it for the larger floor plants because some of them are in 18 and 19 inch grow pots. I got them at a greenhouse supply company um, because I just didn't want to have to deal with repotting those big old plants again. So I'll show you some of them after this, you know, just so you can see. So I do about a half inch layer of worm compost on, on the top on the surface because I'm not going to be repotting those plants for a long, long time. So I want them to have a little bit of extra um. So um, this I got on Amazon too. I think most of the things you can. I have a local worm compost that I use also. But I just wanted to show you this because um, unless you live where I do, you're not going to be able to find that. So I use that for my outdoor plants. And this I use for my Large plants, say they're in a 10 inch pot and larger, I'll do a sprinkling of this here. And those worm castings are nice and rich. They just break down slowly and they naturally enrich it. And you might get a little worm or two. I've gotten a few indoors, but they don't stay. I mean, they don't run all over the house. You know, they just stay in. So you're not going to have an infestation of worms, but they're great for the soil because they aerate the soil and they also poop in the soil. So that is what they, 
what the fertilizer is, like like chicken manure. <laughs> so on to the granular and the liquid ones I use. These, I'll start with the specialty ones first or more specified for the special plants because certain plants have certain um, certain uh, needs. For instance, outdoors, I'll, I'll compost some of my plants that are looking sort of chlorotic or a little bit pale and I'll use like a local compost. But the only ones I use specific fertilizer outdoors for are, are, are my citrus tree and my vegetables and, and my flowering plants. So this is orchid food. I've had this for a very long time. I got this when I lived in Santa Barbara because I had a lot of orchids in my garden. Santa Barbara is a big growing area for orchids, so I had a lot, so I would feed them. I don't use that this much now. Um, I'll maybe twice a year. I've got three, I've got three air plants now, you know, just because they were a little bit harder to keep keep looking good here in this dry, dry climate. Um, and I will mix a little bit of it in the spray bottle and I will just spray it on the air plants. I also have, I also have a couple of bromeliads and I use it on them. This I got on Amazon too. I love this. I love this mister. I've had it for five years now. I think it still works great and I have small hands. So this is like, I don't have to hold a big old mister if you know what I mean. So, for you um, small handed people. Perfect. So next we have African violet food. I've just um, started growing African violets again. I'm going to see how they do here in the desert. Um, the foliage is looking great. They look beautiful, but I'm going to see if I'm, if I can get them to bloom. So I got some of this um, African violet food. I've also been using this on my and Therium also because it is blooming again. So I figure that's good for that. So I'm uh, liking this so far. Oh, we'll see if you get any blooms or not. <laughs> okay, so these are the backbone of my houseplant routine, my, um, how I feed my green babies. And this is Fox Farm Grow Big. This is Neptune's, oops, I, I realized I didn't have it. Um, it's, it's fish emulsion and seaweed fertilizer. And then this is a seaweed fertilizer also, M Maxi. I didn't, I just used up, I think it's grow more. I'll, I'll put up the other, other one I used. I just finished it last fall. So um, I'm doing Maxi this year. But it's, it's another seaweed one. This one is 16, 16, 16. So it's a really balanced all around one. This is two, three, one. Um, a little bit lower in those numbers. And this is six, four, four. The first number is nitrogen. That is for the foliage. So that's why this one is good for foliage plants. Where is this? Um, where are, th are the numbers on this? The, oh, this is one three what? This is one three one. So the middle number is good, you know, for the roots and and the flowering. So uh, that's why I got that one there. So this is what I use, and I'm going to uh, tell you how I use them now. So the first thing I do is I make sure that I. Shaky, shaky, shake. So you want to shake each one well before you use it. Even this, this one is a granular one. These two are liquid ones. People have their own favorite, you know, fertilizers that these are just the ones I use that I really like. So I'm, I'm a Fox Farm kind of gal. I'm, I'm loyal to the Humboldt Nation, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So I just kind of, kind of do this this one before because it has some like beads in it and stuff so I just kind of shake this one up too and then I will just uh, use them as recommended on the bottle in into water and I have a 
um, an RO, a tankless RO system in my kitchen here. And um, I do use like, I'll use like a third tap water and two thirds of the filtered you know, water because um, it's, it's a lot of filtered water, especially in the summer for my plants. So I do it in that you know ratio there so they're getting mostly the filtered water and i do it at room temperature and what else was i going to say oh yes my um filter that i really like it's a water drop um i can leave the link to that too it's got a mineral cartridge because what an ro system does is it takes out everything because that's what you know a lot of the minerals are what causes you know the fertilizer burn and the or not not the fertilizer burn using too much fertilizer causes fertilizer burn but it can cause root burn so i um i have a mineral cartridge and it puts the good stuff back in after it takes the bad stuff out so that is the spiel on the water <laughs> So how do I use all three of these fertilizers, you ask? <laughs> I don't know if, I don't think there's any studies to this, but um, I alternate them. I like to, I think that the plant would be happy getting different things um, every month, a little bit different. I mean, these two, this one is a fish and a seaweed. This is a seaweed. This is just a, um, higher, higher number there, but I think it's kind of nice to alternate that. So, for instance, um, the first month of the, that I started in February, I would use this, and then I would use this in March, and then I would use this in April, and I mark them on my calendar so I know, so I don't get confused as to what I've used and use the same thing all season. So uh, that's my little spiel on that. Can't think of too much else. Oh, I fertilize usually in the morning or the early afternoon just because it's light and uh, bright and I can see. see um, I don't fertilize at night. I don't water my plants at, at night. I don't know if there's any difference you know, between that either, but that's... That is my feeding routine. Well, it's not my feeding routine. It's the routine I use to feed my houseplants. <laughs> yep, after this little video, I'm gonna mix myself up a smoothie, a Fox Farm smoothie. Um, anyway, it's, uh, I also wanna say, if you only have one plant, five plants, even 10 plants, you don't need to get all these fertilizers. I just have a lot of them, both inside and out. So I go through, um, usually, these three bottles every season, you know, because because of the plants in, indoors and outdoors. So don't feel like you have to go out and get all this stuff. I'm just showing you because I hope you find this to be helpful or interesting. So for instance, you could choose just well, one and that would be just fine. I'm sure your plants would be happy with that. So anyway, I thank you for watching. It's always a pleasure to hang out with you. And now let's get out in our gardens, or in this case, into our indoor gardens and make our worlds a more beautiful place. Your plants will appreciate a little bit of feeding. And uh, well, let's see, thank you for your likes and your subscribes. I appreciate them. And I will catch you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Happy spring. Bye.